you'll be wearing like well you would be And my day one bros, they kept me close. Then I sit my technique, take a tour. They're trying to get me on the ropes. I ain't broke, got a special in this coat. Um, breaking, I train breaking, funk styles, popping, locking, what else, waving, tatting, you know, pretty much every <laughs> everything you could do I've tried or done in a way. Um, and more recently, looking at crump. Popping, crump um, and hip hop, but yeah, I have dabbled in house and locking. And I have trained in breaking contemporary hip-hop styles like locking, popping, house, um, I've done a bit of whacking, I've done a bit of kind of like a bit of everything but to a kind of more like a higher standard I'd say really breaking contemporary and um, company hip-hop content. Um, so I've trained in most of the street art styles so at least like a foundation level um, so hip hop, house, popping, locking, breaking, and then a little bit of whacking and a little tiny bit of crump. Um, to start. Um, I've trained in crump, um, hip hop. Um, I've dabbled and dabbled in a lot of things, but the main ones that I've properly trained in is I would say crump and hip hop. I kind of trained breaking, that was the only style I knew. And then I came, came to university, Kingston University, same as Josh. And that's when I got introduced to more hip-hop. Um, got taught by Bismarck, got taught um, hip-hop kind of styles. I later learned like some house and even from these guys kind of learned a bit of crump. I also studied at Kingston University. Um, beforehand I was just kind of freestyling. Also learned um, hip-hop from Bismarck. Also trained in um, a little bit of house um, from like um, Joe Reed and Dwayne Taylor, so that's where the crump comes from. Um, I trained crump uh, just through crump classes and training with uh, Theo Godson and uh, putting it also into like the theatre perspective with Boy Blue. I've have some experience in hip hop and marking. Like before that, I've I've got like ballet and contemporary training as well. Mm, I think it was successful. Um, uh, however, the path that then I've gone on to take. I feel that the realm and the work that I'm working towards more is more to do with, let's say, physical, physical like theatre or, or um, just more intense periods of like work and research. And I think we had that towards the end of our training because then we had artists come in from the professional like world, and of course they maybe they're more used to working at that level and pushing their dancers at that level. Um, but the for sure the first year or two was more about foundation. So in terms of preparing me for the professional world, not so much. But definitely in third year it was up the stakes and I think people then begin to realise and understand that yeah, you need to prepare your body also your personally rather than always, you know, relying on someone else. <laughs> Do you want to yeah. <laughs> um very good question. Not very. Um I think from where I started up anyway, which is like West London, I don't know if most likely will be the same for others, but it's always about the outcome. Mm -hmm. um, so you're training to perform, you're training to compete, you're not training to train, you're not training yourself. I mean, you are training yourself, but it's always for an outcome, if that makes sense. Um, so there's no kind of focus on the body, um, it's just zero.
and then suddenly 100 and zero. <laughs> so I think that fluctuation, there's no like, consistency, um, definitely didn't allow my body to be ready at that time. Um, but I like to think a lot more people are aware now, so it makes that training much more about the body. I never trained in like a school or anything like that when it comes to dance. So all of my experience of training has come from being in crews, um, so being in multiple crews and then going my own way to, to focus on exploring my own dance, whatever that is. Um, so I would say in terms of like environment, it's been like class environment and rehearsals um, for the majority of my, of my training. The hip hop culture often being you go in, you warm up, you do your thing, and then you bounce. Um, so in terms of like stretching or mobilization or conditioning, that was non-existent um, up until literally a couple of years ago. If I'm honest with you, when I pulled myself away from that environment. Um, so in terms of my past experiences, yeah, uh, it's been very important to kind of especially having especially practicing styles that are use the body in very different ways it's been really important to kind of learn how to warm up properly and how to adjust um, the preparation and the conditioning um, according to what is demanded of me in different like for a different piece or for a different phase of the training so yeah, it's been important to prevent myself from injury and to like sustain the repetitive, um, yeah, the, repet the repetition of movement that can be quite demanding of like one part of my body. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, I guess the only formal training I had was in contemporary dance, um, and in terms of being physically prepared. My career path has been more so in the hip hop sector than it has been in the contemporary dance sector, I'd say, even though there is like a crossover. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's hard to say because my training has always been a bit like mix, mix and match. And I've not just, when I was studying contemporary dance, I was also doing some things outside of that. Um, but I think, I think I could have been, there could have been more of a um, focus on like the physical body and like gym workouts and how, how important like that is in conjunction with the dance training because the more and more I've like gone on and through the, through the industry, the more I realise how much is required as well as just the dance, like the other, the other elements as well. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. The training that we got from the actual university itself, I don't think personally it was that good in preparing us for professional work, but the extra curriculum stuff outside of the course was, I think, our stepping stones. Because we, yeah, so we all kind of had the same kind of <coughs> upbringing in terms of dance. So um, yeah, those were the, I think, the really vital stepping stones into preparing us for professional work in terms of the intensity, um, the level of um, dance and choreography, routines, whatever, that we were doing. For me, it was probably the hours that you work. Um, I think in terms of the, the things I learned at uni, um, each year did get more, more intense, I think. I did feel like a little bit of a build, but it was, I felt, quite a big jump stepping into professionalism. I think working with um, our lecturers, because they were ex-professionals, um, I think they came from a, a different place to the people that we were working with that were um, yeah. it, doing the um, extracurricular activities. I think because they were already in companies, or they were active at the time, the training that we had with them was more suitable to what we were going to go into, whereas the stuff that we was doing at university was a bit kind of like catered to everyone, but also um, kind of like being um, spoon-fed in the fact that like 
it was a bit easier so that everyone felt comfortable rather than being pushed to your limit. I think there's a, a big gap between what professional performance requires from you and the kind of stuff that we learn in general classes and workshops. The classes and workshops are much more tailored towards styles and techniques um, and not necessarily to the mindset that you have to have as a performer in terms of, you know, you really, really, you're in a rehearsal room 10 till 6 every day, which you're not used to. Like, you might take a couple of classes, that's maybe three hours, um, but actually working at a really, really physically high level for several days in a row, or weeks in a row even, is an entirely different stress and strain on the body, um, which you just don't really understand until you actually do it. Um, and I think, in general, the, the training that we have in the hip-hop scene, which is maybe less formalised than in contemporary, where you have lots of degrees and things like that, um, yeah, there's not necessarily as big a focus on safe practice in training. So it's something that you learn along the way. Um, and there's now more and more research coming out. But I think it's a kind of a road that you figure out for yourself as you begin to like take on these these jobs. Um, me more is to also have the hours for research and the hours to to create and I'm a like self-motivated individual self-motivated like individual so when it comes to like my own time in the studio then I'll try to make the most of it you know and really maximize the sort of the training in that sense but of course that's not the case for everyone so I think that's why lots of the time it's like class or always looked after and actually to have more freedom would have prepared me also more for the outside world because being freelance, it's a lot more like that. So in terms of like breaking training, I think, I mean, I, breaking was more learned here and there and in like a um, sharing kind of environment, a training environment, but also in workshop settings, class settings, and from all different kinds of um, breakers, like some that are great, some that aren't so great. Um, so I think what would have really helped me was like a kind of more holistic approach and like more about, it's like I got a lot of injuries kind of early on learning breaking because it was just about the move and about kind of forcing my body into positions rather than finding a way in, in a more kind of whole body, less loading on one part of the body type thing. So I got like knee problems and stuff and shoulder issues from not having that awareness and of like stretching, um, cooling down like limbering up the body like different like dynamic kind of ways of warming up before going into such a dynamic and like powerful style um or like and also like knowing when to stop or when to change up certain movements or patterns you know what i mean to kind of like optimize my training um so in breaking i'd say it was that and i think um i think with the contemporary one as well it would have been cool to like oh Hello. It would have been cool to get more of a different style of choreographers in, like, because it, it felt really insular, like, the training was very much like a very certain style of contemporary that a lot of the time, like, wasn't so physical. And I think in order to prepare, you know, an artist for, like, the dance world, they have to kind of do such a variety of things, even if you are a specialist school in one thing. I think it, it makes sense to, like, broaden that horizon because we all know that the dance industry is not linear like that and you don't always do one kind of work even if you're one kind of dancer do you know what I mean which is getting less and less sort of you know you have to be versatile as a dance artist now I think for me conditioning of the body would have been quite useful um and I don't just mean that in like just like a fitness sense I think just learning different things about just certain muscles and how things can link in certain parts of the body. So if you're feeling tense in one area, how it can affect other areas as well. Um, I think they, they briefly touch on anatomy in our first year, but I think um, for like we could have gone a little bit deeper just in just understanding our bodies a little bit more in more of a what's it theoretical sense, yeah. 
Yeah, I think understanding is a big thing because um, a lot of I feel like there was a lot of stuff that was given to us, but at the same time, it wasn't um, explained or done to the point that I was able to feel it in my body and feel the benefits. I feel like I've been doing a lot of things, but the way that I've been doing them hasn't been um, beneficial to my actual growth. So it's like, yeah, we did like conditioning and stuff, and like we, we're doing like, um, say we're doing like crunches. Um, in an exercise, it wasn't like fully explained to the point that you're like, oh, okay, so this is where I should be feeling it. And if my if my like if a part of my body's crunching in a certain way, it doesn't mean that I'm actually doing the exercise correctly. Like the same for like um, even like planking, um, and even like trying to do like um, a bridge. I feel like there was loads of things that I tried to do, but because no one had told me the correct way to do it or the correct way to progress. So like you kind of hit a brick wall, and once you hit a brick wall, you're like, ah, oh, I don't really want to invest into doing this because it just isn't for me. Yeah, I think it's hard because you, you begin to have habits, and then once you've had that foundation of habits, I think now that I'm in a more professional place, I feel like I'm finding it harder to break those habits. Um, so I feel like I'm having to take a couple steps backwards in order to re-lay a foundation of something I can build on. But I think the main thing I would have benefited from would have been the conditioning and preparing the body and, and mobilization to be able to do the things. Um, yeah, I think I would have really benefited from that. That would have really helped me progress, um, I think, at a much quicker rate than trying to do things in dream as well because you don't know how to do them, but feeling the pressure of like needing to do that thing in that space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think like what you said about like the the class and like the workshop space, mm. it's quite hard to then the teacher is there for a function. Yeah, which is like, exactly. You just gotta teach this, go through it, or if it's up to a competition or whatever. Yeah. That's the focus. So it's not really it is, how it? the dancers are they ready for what I'm gonna no. teach them? Are they prepared? It's yeah. just if you're not get there without yeah, actually exactly. guiding. I mean, there are teachers which will guide, but it's all about having time and like that freedom to do totally, that. Yeah. Um, um, what I would have benefited from was, again, it's, it's always to do with time, but like just before and after, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, because some people aren't. And I think if you do care about whatever you're working toward, you should care about who's gonna put, like who's gonna put that work on stage for you or, in whatever environment you're taking it in for you. Um, so I think I definitely would have benefited from a much more holistic approach rather than just um, outcome focused. I've, I've unfortunately taken a lot of classes from, um, from people that didn't focus enough on um, warming up, for example. We'd just go into a static stretch first thing in the morning. You know, people that are not, um, that they, they're not qualified enough to be leading people that are quite young in their training, just throwing, throwing kind of the wrong uh, way to prepare to them. So I would have definitely benefited to um, learning how to, yeah, kind of how to adapt the preparation for what is what is needed. So yeah, learning that if I need to if it's a piece that is that needs more cardio, I need to do that in my extra time, you know? Or if it's something that requires more um, kind of strength conditioning, like how I can do things in my own time and how I can do that like before class or before us or so. Yeah, the, the importance of adaptability and doing things in my own time, yeah. ways that I prepare for it. Um, for example, I'm working on like a community project at the moment. So I know it's also about my communication skills with, with those that I'm teaching and those that I'm rehearsing with. You know, it's not just a case of doing it, showing all this impressive stuff, is also a way of me breaking it down verbally to be able to communicate that. Um, but then, yeah, if it's a more physical, professional work, let's say, then it's important for me to also really tune the body, like, cater for their work. 
if it's more breaking then maybe I do more ideas of stacking or whatever um, and, and work more of these sort of areas. If it's my own class for that to up then I know I sort of want to keep the fluidity and, the, and my, my joints nice and loose in order to then like push through the class. It's usually very much left alone to us as individuals. So Kenrick will send a message <laughs> like a week before saying make sure you're ready <laughs> and it's like okay um, so he kind of leaves it up to us and the expectation is that we come to rehearsal with the level of fitness that is required um, so in the audition for Rebel he cut it from like 60 people to 8 in one go because the other people just couldn't they didn't have the level of physicality in the first round so it was like you're never going to be able to do this piece um, and the people that were left are the people who actively themselves have like a fitness practice that they maintain um, so yeah so for me I'm always several times a week trying to do some kind of hit workout that's a combination of different muscle groups and different exercises some that are more general fitness and some that are more dance specific so yesterday I was doing like mountain climbers but on on my knuckles because I'm training breaking at the moment so I'm trying to build my hand strength um, Sometimes I would do, in the, in the Christmas just before Rebel, I was doing back-to-back uh, -back flick ups as a, just an exercise to get my body used to it. Um, so, yeah, and then very occasionally during our Sunday sessions, he'll do a fitness warm up where we have to like run around the park and then do a hit thing all together. But yeah, usually it's, it's left up to the individual to, to make sure they do whatever they need to do to come ready for what he needs us to do. Uh, in terms of Project World War, we, um, because it was a, a piece that was already made uh, a few years ago and it's been constantly developed for two, three years now, um, we've, it's been important to maintain cardio, so keeping our stamina on point because it's quite, um, it has explosive movement and also kind of a sustained um, high demand for energy. Um, definitely strength conditioning, so a lot of kind of like upper body strength and um, yeah, I'd say because we use the, we use comp language in it quite a lot, uh, definitely kind of doing comp, doing comp drills, um, using, I mean, we have we have some some floor work, so um, incorporating that in our warm ups. Um, but yeah, a lot of um, yeah, using quite a lot of resistance band because of the amount of tension that the body has to be in. Um, but also maintaining length, I guess. Uh, because of you know having to is it's a very expressive piece so uh, making sure that we maintain the size of the movement like the length of the movement while we have to be very tense. <laughs> um, I think there's always time. There's allocated time for yourself, and that doesn't really mean train this and train that. Whereas like. Sometimes then that might be that expectation. Like if I give you free time, you need to be training. Mm. But this is I'm giving you free time so you can get ready for what we're about to do. And that could just be okay today. My body's ready, but mentally I just need to get a few things out of the way. Yeah. You need to be in the space. Or it could be okay. I just need to move around for like 20 minutes to get my body warm. Yeah. And just that level of freedom, still maintaining the guideline, is really helpful. I find. Yeah. Um, because it's it's quite restricted, but there is a freedom on how you prepare yourself. So I think it it it, um, it acknowledges the individual in the company setting. So everyone has different needs. So you have this time to meet that need. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. A lot of checking in with everyone uh, regularly throughout the day, both on a psychological, like emotional, and physical uh, basis, and uh, also variations. So. There is a prep 
for example, she'll eat in the morning so that our bodies are warm um, using sort of yoga techniques. And then if your body still is unable to do certain things because we're all like different, we all have different training backgrounds, um, Ella's very good at giving you the freedom and the option to vary that so that you're not injuring yourself or pushing your body past what it can do. Working uh, within this company, how is your body prepared for what is demanded of you? How is your body prepared? <laughs> uh, a lot of the preparation is done in rehearsals, so like depending on what the piece is, the fitness, the movement that we do, all caters towards that one piece. So like we've had, we've had a piece that focused more on using locking, um, cramp energy, and boy, I don't even know what else. Hip -hop. Hip, yeah, hip hop. Yeah. So it was all, all of that, all of our fitness and all of the movement that we did in our warm up was catered towards that specific piece, um, and then. Because everything is so explosive within what we do, just like everyday fitness is within the piece, within rehearsals and, we're, and out of that's what mm. I guess everyone tries to do when they can. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's also preparing yourself yeah. um, outside of um, rehearsals as well. So whatever you're kind of struggling with, you have to kind of um, push yourself to do that more. Because we're, because we've all got different strengths and weaknesses, it's trying to um, make sure that all of us are kind of in the same boat. Mm. Obviously, everyone has different levels of flexibility and explosiveness, but it's trying to make sure that we're all as close to each other as possible. I think. Yeah. yeah I think it's also finding warm up that can kind of can transfer the skills, but in the warm up can transfer into our movement. So it's allowing us to strengthen those areas that we're going to be moving in. And I think like Jordan said, like, um, it's constantly evolving and similar to what Josh was saying as well. Um, it's very specific to what the work, what is required of our bodies for that specific piece of work. So it will be different within each process, I think. So at the moment, what does a typical warm up look like mm -hmm. in rehearsals? Burpees. Yeah, burpees. <laughs> I focus, I mean, because I, I know I have to work on my core regardless. Uh, I had to do quite a lot of work on that. Um, working on my upper body strength and using resistance band for that, doing quite a few press ups. Um, doing cardio in my own time. Um, doing like dynamic stretches for that, um, quite, quite a lot of legs actually, and um, also just going through some crump foundations or having kind of like a little, like a few, like five minutes where um, like creatively I also set up my mind to go through the movement but maintain the foundation so do you yeah. um is there um does your warm up change mm -hmm. if you're um, preparing um to do like crunk movement compared mm -hmm. to if it's like more just hip hop or whacking? Is there yeah. a definite like difference? I mean, to be honest, I've never used um, working specifically at all, so that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, I've more so practiced it in, in my own time, um, just for freestyle purposes, but, um, like, if, if I know if this is something that is, like, very crumb influenced, I'll... Burpees. Yeah, burpees. <laughs> yeah, burpees. And a lot of, um, because we do like, um, I think it's called a mas masala. I can't remember what the word is. It's a yoga squat, basically. But we basically end up in that squat position a lot. And it's, um, I think it's training. 
going from like really explosive movement to being still yeah because we do that a lot and it's trying to maintain um a hold because i think even um when Bogus is watching the piece he says that we don't look as tired as we are i think mentally and physically <laughs> We're dying, but I think because of the training that we do inside of rehearsals, mm. when we come to stop for a moment, I think we're able to recover slightly quicker than people usually would because of how explosive our um, warm up is. Yeah, I would, yeah, warm ups are very explosive. Um, like an hour long max, and always. The, inten- the intensity stays high. It never, we never really have a long rest point or something that's slow and static or still or whatever, slow moving. It's always a 100%. Yeah, I think for us, it's finding a place where we can, I'm going to say, stay consistent when we're working at that high intensity or at that high rate. Um, but yeah, still keeping our composure as well. Um, yeah, I think it happens a lot in the piece where we're kind of moving quite rapidly as a group and then all of a sudden we just come to a stillness and that's when you really have to understand how your body's working because if you stop suddenly and then your body just starts to panic then um, it can be, yeah, it can be quite damaging. The first few weeks we did um, like workouts, you know, every morning to start so that would be like uh, cardio mixed with strength uh, training um, and like varied you know we'd go from like sort of stop like let me just say star jumps for example that would be one movement that's like upright uh, cardio movement and then we'd have you know crawls across the floor and then weight bearing we'd do some like lifting of partners that was more so kind of later on once we were warmer but you know it's like really varied kind of conditioning um, cardio combination um, and it, that really works for my body of like getting um, getting really warm and sweaty before I go into any work because it kind of burns through everything you're just ready to ready to go with with whatever um, but then also like I think once you kind of like we'd done that for a few weeks we had then had more like a personal warm-up time um, and then going into like straight into into work um i know that i definitely led some sort of yoga-esque like kind of movement one morning um we did stuff at certain points we used them like also for workouts as well like jumping either side of the mat um we did some we did some martial arts stuff as well um so it was kind of varied and the yoga we did finish the day with like stretching time with our yoga mats um so yeah, it was a nice like variety. Um, but I think that really worked, like having that initial period of like really every day going in before we start um, and then kind of easing off on that, but like also having the option of doing bits and pieces like optional sort of workouts before we started. Um, so it, it, was, it was a really nice balance of like doing your own thing and also doing everything, things as a group and like using the team morale to kind of push ourselves as well as warm up. Um, but he, he, like Ken gave us our, our own like time and like ways of doing our own warm ups that worked for us as well. Because I think everybody is different and it's knowing what your limits are and go working within them, especially like during a warm up as well. To me, the warm up is crucial, um, and I always do my own thing before a before a class or before you know, yeah, before any class. I would always still make sure I get there with enough time to do my own thing. So probably around half an hour before or something like that. Um, cool down, I know is important. <laughs> I know it is, and I have to be truthful. I do it some days, and other days I just get carried away with playing some music or something like this and going ham <laughs> at the end of class. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to me it's, it's really important too. Um, usually we get there early to kind of do our own personal warm up, um, which for me is yoga sun salutations, um, a lot of core stuff like plank press ups, things that use your whole body. Um, and then sometimes I'll just I'll kind of 
improvise in a particular style that I'm feeling like doing um, just to generally get my body warm and then lots of stretching and then as a group um, usually we do some kind of session all together which might be more cardio based um, or strength based or kind of like high intensity interval stuff so it really varied depending on the day and what Ken felt like doing um, but especially at Barbican the first couple of days we did a lot of HIIT training which is some like boxing rounds um, similar to what you do in Norm um, yeah and then sometimes he'll do like 10 exercises back to back and they're quite high intensity ones like tuck jump diving forward roll flick up th- things like that but um, and is yeah. that movement um, would you say it's because of what the movement of the piece yeah, involves definitely so yeah those kind of movements Ken is really really on that actually with conditioning so he's saying like there's no point just going to the gym and doing whatever movements we need to be specifically training the dance related movements that are in the rep that we're using so Project Rebel had loads of push ups loads of flick ups loads of tuck jumps and rolls and things like that so he was like let's let's get it in in the morning and do like back to back for a minute solid each exercise so that your body is switched on um which, which works. So I guess physically, I automatically think about physically being in shape, um, but I also think that's there's like a sensitivity and a sensibility about your physical connection to what you're doing and it coming from a more grounded and meditative space doing like hip hop theater because theater is different to, you know, a 2d sort of performance. Um, and I think it requires an awareness, like a physical awareness that, um, goes beyond staying fit um as well as of course physically being in shape um yeah and i I don't know how much detail you want me to go into in terms of like what is required of staying fit or maybe that's a, a later question but um i think that can mean different things to different people but i think being able to sustain your self throughout a period of time as well because um for example in breaking it's a very different way of exerting yourself it's like short sharp uh sharp bursts of like everything and then a rest it's like interval style whereas hip-hop theaters uh, depending on what kind of piece you're doing you know obviously in red our piece was like god how long is it 75 minutes without a break right and obviously we're on and off like a little bit but that requires us to pace our energy or to if not pace it just find a way through it that's not gonna look like we're tired (laughs) at any point (laughs) Um, and I think but a lot of that's a mental thing as well do you know what I mean it's like so joined in with the physical that it's like being really present is really important being really present in the physical body and like letting that be expansive so yeah, hopefully that answers that. A lot of stamina and endurance physically to 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 actually get through those long rehearsal days. So even if your show is only a half an hour show, you're, you're dancing like a crazy amount of hours in the lead up to that, um, and and that takes obviously a lot of physical stamina, but also I think mental stamina especially working with Ken because the type of stuff that he gets us doing is using your brain as like as much as your your muscles so even when you leave rehearsals you you still have loads of stuff to think about when you're at home you might have notes to go through or stuff to get your head around like crazy combos with a million counts so you don't really have much time to switch off and actually mentally rest um so a lot of mental kind of endurance um and also mental endurance in terms of being able to push yourself through that really hard physical process. 
stamina, strength, mm. um, definitely the endurance for longer pieces, mm. sorry, stamina, um, I think flexibility, um, yeah, a lot, mm. a lot. Uh, I really think that athlete needs artists is what dancers are. Mm. I think definitely strength, but like a, a maintained high level of strength <laughs> and maintained high level of stamina. Mm. And I think there's, I mean, I understand why, but there's almost like a treatment of everyone needs to have the exact same that level of strength, the exact same level of stamina. It's like everyone's different, and that's not that shouldn't be a negative that everyone's different. Like, right. you can use that to your strength. Right. Um, so definitely flexibility as well, but yeah. like sometimes strength takes away from flexibility, yes. but also it could be the opposite. And again, to maintain that high level, you have to go out somewhere and find yeah. that and train it. Um, so definitely stamina, strength, flexibility, but I also think um, not just flexibility in terms of the body, but in terms of like the mind, because you kind of like a hip hop theatre uh, company, kind of more contemporary inspired that still uses like hip hop techniques, and you could have like a purely hip hop, uh, hip hop uh, theatre world, uh, sorry, not world, company that kind of is inspired by contemporary, but it's still very like, rooted in hip hop. Um, I mean, classic example like Boy Blue and let's say Far From Norm that just comes to my mind. You can tell there's different requirements. That's like that's the expectation. You can do that, and you can also do that. And I think because a lot of hip hop theatre artists do freelance, that's also expected of them. So you're really flexible on that piece, but we need more strength here. Or okay, can you bring that here? But there's a different requirement. If that makes sense. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. I think being a hip hop artist, you have to be a lot more explosive in your movement, so then it shortens like um, your um, your muscles become because they're a lot stronger. It's harder to become um, as flexible. So I found that um, when working with like contemporary um, dancers, because of their range, their um, so I'm looking for. Sometimes they're not as powerful in other areas because their body takes them to a different place. So like their shoulder flexibility yeah. might go like way far out. So then if we're doing something like arm swings, their arms like all the way out here when because our bodies are the way that they are, there's a limit to where my movement goes to. Because well like, in terms of what we do, um, dance wise, it's versatility. Um, because Crump is like my bread and butter. It's it restricts me sometimes, so I've had to kind of either stop <coughs> training it for a bit and train something else, or like what's the word I'm looking for? Accompany it with something else, just to even it out and make sure that I have a wide a wider arsenal of things to access when dancing so it doesn't just become the same or you know I'm able to access different things different qualities different levels and stuff like the floor is a weak point for me personally so I do try and train other things like I've started to look into capoeira a little bit breaking a little bit it's not my favorite thing to do in the world but yeah having just having a wider arsenal I think is very key yeah. for a hip hop artist and I think it's I think it's a mental thing just as much as a physical. Like I think as a hip hop artist, um, there can be a lot of stereotypes in terms of what hip hop movement looks like. And I think if I was working in a theatre background now, um, we have to have an open mind in terms of how far hip hop can go and where we can push those boundaries. Um, so yeah, that we're not kind of just doing the norm of what hip hop could be. But we're kind of pushing it. What do I think is required? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like a. Okay, what do I think is required? I'll, I'll start basic, and if anything mind blowing comes, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think it's like. Um, it's that uh, independence uh, in terms of like working in the studio. Um, I think it's. I mean, it's kind of similar to most artist roles anyway, not necessarily the hip-hop theatre. But, um, like, just this idea of, like, uh, communication, like, not only, like, in the studio and, like, in terms of 
you and the artist, but also just like you and the body and you and counts and things like this. So to also take that time away from the studio is also important. Um, obviously, I don't mean your whole life like revolves around it, but when in training, I don't think we were pushed at a level that has that count complexity. But of course, I didn't train at school, so that catered for the hip hop world, let's say. Um, but for sure, that's what I see in the hip hop industry. Um, um, yeah, it's a willingness to work in, um, and when you're in, you're, you're really working, you're really going to that maximum. And then when you're out, there's also that other side of things, which I think it isn't always remembered or looked after, let's say. Oh my gosh, it's so important. It's so important because, I mean, I know for a fact having like a shoulder and a knee kind of right now, how much that will impact on me being able to even strength and condition in a time of no work. So, and then that has such a huge knock on effect on everything else because if you have an injury, then you have to let it rest and you're kind of compromised to a degree when you're resting. And yeah, it's, it, it's so important that everything stays in a balance, which is like obviously really hard when you work in an imbalanced way to stay in a balance. Um, yeah. I mean, it would be, yeah, would, again, it would be really interesting to see like where, cause I think it's really hard to know where the boundaries are between pushing yourself going too far and not far enough. And the more we can have research or know about what's right, um, like as an overall, what's what seems to be working for most people, and then a kind of more specific, you know, strength, yeah, strength-based training. Like, what what are the areas of weakness? How do we strengthen them? Because again, it's like about longevity, right? Because everyone in that cast will have had one point of weakness or two points of weakness that maybe someone's in, say, observing. Maybe there's a physio in that's observing one day and looking at how we actually work. Uh, through everything and if there's any habits or tendencies because like I had a lot of lower back problems and maybe someone else had like some knee issues maybe someone else had neck problem that all could be corrected through like that awareness and going oh do you know what this is quite a slight thing but you know you could try that but again you know it's that would be like a dream right if we could have someone in just like going oh Emma actually your pelvis is slightly tilted forward um, when you do that uh, stomp, you know. <laughs> but like a lot of it, I think, is like to do with <laughs> the core and how we use the core. And like so many injuries, I think, come from from that area. So like that could go back as far as the formal training, even before that. It's so like the emphasis on how you use that that trunk in movement and like using it effectively and using the core effectively. So I think that is the one thing that's really, you can use the core in so many different ways and it's actually not in the correct way, you know? Um. Um, to me, the, the, sh the strength part is, uh, is oh, right, strength, skill and injury is all kind of vital. I've only ever really suffered a, a tiny little like sprain, let's say, on my ankle. Um, so I've been very fortunate when it comes to injuries, but I think that's due to the way that I look after my body in terms of the strength and the skill. Um, uh, because also I like to mix up my training and things, so not necessarily just dance, but also maybe boxing or things like that, or maybe more circus. So because of this, sometimes I build strength in areas that then jeopardize when I do another class. Um, so it always fluctuates in terms of where my focus is. Um, but I like that and I like the fact that one day I'll feel super good in my own practice and then because I've been doing that for two weeks then when I go to be with someone new I pick up phrases quite quick but then I'll struggle to really find the essence of what they're after because I'm so used to working on my own skill rather than their skill um, but to me it's all important and that's why I try to keep it versatile so then it just keep, constantly keeps challenging me so that then it stays fun, stays enjoyable, um, and remains like a process rather than just like, oh, this is my skill, great, I'm just going to keep working on this one skill. Yeah. Very, like if my knee goes, I'm kind of done. Um, specifically now, the things I've like gone out and trained in, I need a lot of my leg strength. 
But any type of injury kind of just knocks you out of the game because mm -hmm. everyone else can maintain and meet that high level of stamina and strength. Um, and because it's quite a small world, um, there are people doing multiple roles, but yeah. again, that's kind of expected for you to be able to be in this company, do this work, and at the same time be in that and do that. Yeah. So I think any type of injury just knocks you out of that, the immediate world of who's available, who can I work with, and it takes time to get back into that. Um, yeah, does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, same, very, very important, I think. Um, both nutrition and fitness has been like a real key thing that I've been mindful, more mindful of. Um, and at the end of the day, when you're freelance and you're an independent artist, nobody's responsible for you apart from yourself. So if you ain't looking after your body, then it's pee. <laughs> um, so yeah, extremely important. I think it should be at the top, top, top of the list for anybody who is um, having to be their own business and their own representative and career and dancer and all the other things that we are. Yeah. It's the most important. Yeah. Can't, can't really afford to get injured. No. Really, because we've got a tour coming up yeah. and we're all freelance. If there's any other side jobs that we need to do, yeah. I think the, the scariest thing is going to do another job and getting injured in that process and then bringing the injury back into this process. Because I think if it happens... If it happens in this process, which is like the main thing for all of us, if it happens in this one, then it's like a bit more um, justified. Whereas if it happens outside of the process yeah. and you bring an injury in, then when you can't do things that you're being asked to do, then it becomes an issue. Yeah, I think, I think it's a balance of yeah, living and also professionalism because you've signed a contract and you're, you've, you've committed to looking after yourself during that process and then... But then at the same time as a freelance artist, you have to you have to live, you have to earn other money from other projects. So um, yeah, it's just making sure that we're aware of that. I think is yeah, it's quite hard sometimes. Now for me, it's just like either or. Even when I'm in the process and we're doing certain things, I know that's gonna be detrimental to me. I'm like, I'm not gonna do that because. I won't be able to do this project, I won't be able to do anything else, I won't just be able to dance in general, just have fun with it. And that's like a that's a really big thing for me, just because I've had quite a lot of injuries uh, in my career and it is it's been hard. So I take extra precaution when it comes to doing new things or even if it's something I know I can can do, I I'm like there's I don't need to push myself and do it now. I, I can do it now, so let me know risk anything that's that's just how i look at it okay it's understanding our own bodies i think mm -hmm. um for sure knowing knowing what our limits are and even when little niggly bits just being aware and listening to our bodies i think i think we don't do that too much i think us as dance artists can be quite stubborn um in the sense that even in us, us as a company we, we we like to push and we like to push the boundaries of how far we can go and i think sometimes that can cloud our judgment a little bit um because we wanna, we don't wanna let down the team. We wanna make sure they're always, always elevating what's going on in the room. Um, so yeah, I think it's just for us, just being a bit more wise. Super important. <laughs> um, strength is a big one in Boy Blue because of the, the physical stuff that he needs us to do. So we need really good upper body strength. Um, there's a lot of kind of diving on the floor. <laughs> um, and he expects men and women to be the exact same. Like if, if he asks you to do 10 dolphins back to back, there should be no excuse. Everyone has to be able to do at least 30 push-ups in a row. Um, and for me now as an individual as well, that's getting increasingly important because I'm doing more floor work stuff. Um, and then in house, uh, you need really, really strong legs to come up and down from the floor like smoothly. Um, and then, uh, what was the other two? Injury. Uh, skill. Skill. Injury kind of come together. Um, I've been practicing a lot of skills and techniques for a long time, but what I've realized uh, is like it doesn't really matter necessarily how many skills you have if you can't apply them in the right way, which is the artistry element. 
Um, so now, more in my own personal practice, that's what I'm trying to understand. Is like, okay, I already have this arsenal of movements and, and techniques to a quite good level. How and where am I applying them in my performance or in my freestyle that is going to elevate my dance? Usually, I'll get some kind of small injury, um, which will maybe make me have to adapt my fitness practice or my dance practice for a week or a couple of weeks and then it's back to normal. Um, in summer I dislocated a bone in my wrist and that was two days before the Latitude Rebel performance where we had to do all the flick ups so I had to do the whole thing with just no hands. Um, um, but yeah, touch wood, no like, major ones at the moment. Very important. Um, and I, using using Kong quite a bit and uh, coming from a contemporary background as well, um, it's it's important to it's important for me to um, be in the in a state where I can be I can execute explosive movement and maintain kind of. Uh, maintain the length in my body because crumb can be quite um, you know it can change the posture of the body a lot so it's been important for me to uh, maintain like flexibility length in my, in my movement and like remaining agile because crumb can cause us sometimes to like think that we have to be very static and and tense and isolated so and yet maintaining the balance of the two is, is being very important.